Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs, right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria, I am your host, and I'm pleased to welcome back Craig Norris. He is the CEO of Victoria International Marina, and as well, so many things, uh, the Coast Center for Applied Sustainable Technologies, the founder of Super Yacht Canada Association, and co-founder of Future Oceans Society. So you're a very, very busy man. How are you, Craig? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, Anna. Well, what's going on? I mean, we talked to you probably about a year and a half ago, and uh, there was just prior to the whole COVID situation, and Victoria International Marina was just taking off, and there was a lot of great things to be said about it. Um, we sort of discussed the sustainability things that you had going on there. It, it was just everything looked very glossy and wonderful for the future. Um, what's happened since? Well, yeah, I, I mean, we we were discussing we we're on the eve of a year of COVID uh, really shutting down uh, the borders, uh, at least here in the Pacific Northwest and yeah, around the world. But right about now, last year, everything dried up. So we were looking good. We Our first year, I think, or, well, our first full operating year, we had 80, 80 boats uh, in and out. Uh, the next year, we had 160 boats in and out. Um, that was based on a prior prior to the season. We had about 20 reservations. That's it. But it turned out to be 160. Um, and then the next year we had over 150, so around 150, 160 reservations and all of them canceled. So last summer was, was um, I'll call it a Canadian summer because the Canadian boats were still moving around. So it was nice to see some of them um, because of the restrictions on COVID, um, people were staying south. They weren't going north as much to the remote communities um, as it just wasn't, um, you know, congenial to, to, to those communities to be traveling around in them. So they were staying south. So, you know, that helped a little bit to keep business going, but we lost um, our entire international component, which, which is about 85% of our business. So, um, you know, we had to furlough over half our staff um, and um, the rest of us just worked really hard to stay communicating with, uh, with, with our customers, with the industry to move, everything forward as we continually push back all those things that need to be pushed back, um, like the Pacific Super Yacht Forum. Um, and several of our big rendezvous that were planned last year were all canceled. Uh, for instance, we had the, you know, the, the biggest gathering of Nordhaven yachts um, in the world ever. It was going to happen. It was so exciting. They were excited. Uh, and of course, that didn't happen. And it's not going to happen this spring either. So, um, you know, we, uh, we're getting a little tired of holding our breath, but we're doing everything we can. And uh, we still have hope um, that uh, maybe we'll pull off a little bit of a summer this summer, but really um, 2022 is uh, is what we have to look forward to. Anyway. Well, the owners of Victoria International Marina have now put it up for sale. Do you think it's going to be purchased by a Canadian company or do you think it's going to become another marina that is bought out by a, a company that literally owns marinas around the world? Well, it'll be one of those. Um, we've been looking at investors and or purchasers for over a year and a half now within our own circles, um, mainly on the private sort of family side, uh, who's interested. And um, I would really like to see a, a Canadian, um, somebody somebody who's Canadian and 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 has um, is in the yachting business or the marine business that really understands it, uh, because it takes a certain kind of passion to to enter this business, which isn't um, all about making money. Um, there's a little bit of a lifestyle piece in there as well. So I'd like to see that. That being said, um, there are some great uh, marina companies that have built up over the past few, uh, past decade, really, um, of conglomerates that uh, have a have a great model um, and uh, and they're growing fast. And uh, I just as much like to see them a part of it to bring those resources to bear. Um, we are absolutely ready to expand. Um, we have about five other marina locations at various stages of, of closing and, uh, and are operating and extending our brand into that to develop the whole West Coast. So um, whoever comes in, I hope they have the, the resources to continue on with that plan. Um, but uh, either or, um, as, as long as they're a fit for the culture. 
Well, you know, Victoria International Marina is absolutely stunning. Uh, it is state of the art. It, I've seen a lot of it. And what we're going to do is when this interview airs, we'll make sure to provide the website down below. Um, and I encourage people to take a look because I've seen a lot of marinas in my life, but Victoria International Marina is is quite spectacular. Yeah, it is. A, you know, we're very proud of it. Obviously, it's a, it's a magnificent piece of construction um, and most up to date everything um every component of it is is up to date and you know and, and uh, especially the electrical getting getting ready for uh electric propulsion and charging um and yeah on our website too you can even do a virtual walkthrough of the entire facility the inside and out and all through the docks and everything uh so you can you can see the detail if you like to nice will you stay on with a new owner uh well that depends on the owner um you know um, you know is there a fit there do <clears throat> does my style and their style merge all that kind of thing so that decision will come when we find out um, who actually steps up to the plate so that will depend I really am interested in growing and continuing the development of the super yacht industry um, in Canada um, so um, if, if that's on the block then then so will I well let's move on to the coast center for applied sustainable technologies this is a new thing that you have jumped on board. And, and from the stories that I've read, you were quite skeptical about the entire thing to begin with. Explain to us what it is. What is the Coast Center for Applied Sustainable Technologies? Yeah, so around the world and Canada's, you know, involved in this, but lagging a little bit with Europe, the, the, the idea of um, uh, participating in the development of cluster groupings of, of in industry. So uh, not necessarily around our traditional injuries, injuries, industries like oil and gas or, or mining or whatever, but a group of companies that gathers together to make a type of product or, or to, to solve a specific challenge or growth area. These clusters of, of companies, um, we've always had a cluster of high tech ocean industries here, but no one's gather them together under an umbrella to, and, and, and really nurtured them and provided support, um, the communication services, education, accelerator, incubator services, all that kind of stuff to get startups connected with uh, um, big business, um, international business. That's the, that's the core job of this is to, to say, here's the strengths of the West Coast. Let's advertise that or let's be what we are and tell everybody about it. But let's also uh, come together, um, operate sometimes locally, like actually have a bit of a campus um, where you can interact, um, um, you know, eventually without COVID, but have that interaction. Uh, it's becoming less and less important um, with the advent of us being able to work remotely and digitally, but, uh, but to some extent, you have to build something at some point and uh, having the guy across from you that's, that's building something or, 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 or the lady over here that's, that's working on some technology to be able to say, hey, I could really use that over here. We have this problem will help. So that proximity as well, we'll be working on. So that this is happening. It's been happening for decades in Norway. Their, their, their development is quite mature. Um, they were on our, uh, a number of our Norwegian companies were on our our panel in the business case we wrote last year to help inform us of how they've how they've grown, how they've done this. So we certainly don't want to reinvent the wheel, but uh, we'll have a Canadian flair to it and a West Coast flair to it as well. Well, currently straight across the planet, we are seeing with COVID that people are starting to look at yachting differently. They are looking at excursion yachts. They are looking at expeditions. Uh, they're looking to go where no man has gone before. We've seen a lot of interest in the Northwest Passage. Do you find the timing of putting this together um, is good timing as far as that goes? Because there is going to be, and there already is a push right near you know, the Pacific Northwest there, right near Victoria, Vancouver, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. I mean everything's lining up like we thought it would and hoped it would, except for a global pandemic. And that, um, you know, we've been advertising and telling people, more people about the Pacific Northwest story, but it, right, right at the very beginning, uh, as we talked about before, it was on the hunger sort of, um, of, of the world to come to, to see new adventure, to find a new area, not just, you know, blue water and white sand beaches. There's something different to explore. There's history to explore. There's nature, there's serenity. There's all these things that, that are cravings, well, hey, there's a place to do it. And then there's all those other things that are opening up, like um, Panama has now um, become a little bit more expensive to get through the canal. And so there is, is there alternatives to that? Well, actually, 
you know, because of climate change and maybe somewhat unfortunate, but the north is open and you can actually get through the Northwest Passage. That's become another uh, attraction for people. There was the early adopters and the explorers that kind of went, hey, I'm going to ice class my vessel and make it up there, which in itself is a bunch of technology on the boat. And um, now it's becoming, you know, there's charters being offered up there. And now the actual thought of coming up and around is 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 not that big of a deal and uh, you can do it. So we're getting that opening up. So not only from the South, from the North, um, we have a mature yacht shipping industry as well. We, you know, we have the company Raven United is out here. Um, they work with, um, um, all the providers, not just United, but to get ships out, um, boats, uh, owners' boats out here is, is not a big, difficult thing to do anymore. So all that sort of weaving together that it's easier to, to get your boat here and to, it's easier to do it. And uh, so they just had to know that they could and all that's working together, absolutely. And people are looking for an alternative. They're looking for something different. And yes, COVID helped in that they're, they're all pontificating and thinking about things that may, may not have had time or thought about before. Well, and I mean, something about the entire area of Canada is that, you know, we're, we're taking a look at a new ultra high net worth individual right now. They're average age, 48 years old. They've been married for 10 years. They've got three kids. They're looking for experience. They're looking to take their kids with them. So part of that is the education aspect. Um, and having done some interviews with other people and, and some charter uh, companies along the Pacific Northwest Coast, the amount of education opportunities that are there, not only with nature, uh, but with history and culture, there are so many things to offer in that area when it comes to the new ultra high net worth individual. Absolutely. And it's, it's you know, really, it wasn't some magic that, that, that Future Oceans uh, Society was formed, was really around that in, in, taking some of these experiences and attaching to the real world problems. And uh, in that case, it was uh, plastics in the ocean where we had our, our big uh, couture fashion show, which was co connecting the culture of fashion, ultra high net worth design. It was also technology and innovation and clothing science and plastic science that we, that, that were tackled um, in that initiative. And, and because they're craved, uh, people want to be a part of helping you know, protect or save or, or, you know, the planet and the resource in which they're enjoying, which is the ocean and, and moving around and exploring. Um, not to mention the nature that they are exploring. Um, coast, even um, to draw a connection back to that, my involvement more and more in that area was a lot of the yachters saying, you know, interested in technology as you know, boats are technological items um, that um, they might be luxury and beautiful, but you go in the engine room or, or behind a panel in a super yacht and uh, you're looking at like space shuttle technology and or better. Um, it's amazing. And so they're, they're naturally inclined to, you know, they're interested in that type of thing and they're interested in contributing. There was a company that's actually looking and testing the water column for microplastics. Um, Ocean Diagnostics is their name, and, and it's just a startup, and they're, and they're developing this, and uh, he said, do you think yachters would be interested in having one of these units on board? And I'm like, absolutely they would. In fact, come into the marina, test it, uh, let's do a showcase around it, people can come, and as we got, that was before Coast was, was underway, but as Coast comes, I offered up the entire marina to the, the, the Center for, Ocean, uh, for Applied Sustainable, oh, geez, the Center for Ocean Applied Sustainable Technologies. I offered the site up for testing, for showcasing, bring in these people because they are investors and they love to be in that avenue of saving, um, contributing to technological development and the environmental cause or, or the blue economy we're calling it now, um, that, that, that sort of green, green stuff applied in the ocean. They love being a part of that. So connecting those two is sort of, a, it's a natural thing if you listen to what people are wanting. Right. Well, you know what? I mean, everything that you've done, and I mean, even from the creation of Victoria International Marina to begin with, it took you years, but you made sure that it was um, sustainable and as much as you could. Um, yeah. So everything that you are doing is definitely sort of the way yachting is headed in the future. Um, and I think you are actually laying down footprints for those to follow in. And I congratulate you on that. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. And yeah, you don't even see it happening as it happens. You just do things that you think are for the right reason. And another thing, ha other things happen. We had a group come by uh, last summer, actually headed by um, a yacht captain who uh, on the side does this other work and they were harvesting um, some of the seaweed that was, um, that kind of is 
almost problem seaweed and it's, it's, it's an opportunistic species that grows very fast, the kelp. Um, they were harvesting off, um, that off the docks um, for a fertilizer program and recycling program that we have in the city. And um, they came out with like a half a ton uh, that they pulled off. Now we're working with them to, to contribute that back and things like that just happen or, you know, organically. Um, and, but because you're out there saying, hey, we do the right thing and someone calls up and said, hey, I, I hear you're kind of okay with stuff like this. Would you be interested? Well, hell yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's what's great about the yachting industry is that, um, and especially when you get into super yachts, I'm finding more and more through time and, and interviews that I do that the industry is much more interested in giving back than it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, so we are seeing a change straight across the board and it's a good change. It's a good change to see. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, we're going to dive into a little bit more when we start the super yachting industry, I think is, well, I know they're looking for that next customer. Um, you know, there, there's always this discussion or there was this discussion around, hey, only 5% of the world's ultra high net worth that can afford a yacht have a yacht. Why is that? And, and my answer has, has always been because there's a huge chunk of wealth um, in the new world, we'll, we'll say, we'll call it, um, of the Pacific even, um, that isn't interested in, in sort of, or wasn't a part of the growth of the lifestyle of traditional yachting. And they're looking for something different. They're looking for, like you said, adventure. They want to see technological innovation in propulsion. They don't want a, a diesel guzzling um, machine or, you know, it, it's important to their, their, their beliefs and their values that, that their lifestyle, you know, fit with, um, fit with what they believe. And, and the auditing industry has to bend and come around to that. And, and technology is going to help us do that. Um, and they're right in the middle of it. So um, I hope that helps too, with that evolution of the industry, when we get in the, the other 95%, or at least maybe let's go for another 5% of it, um, that, uh, that, that we can, you know, I'm, I'm super excited when those people get involved. Um, we even, we have executives from Microsoft and, um, Amazon who come into the Marine on a regular basis and they love to come up and talk about, Hey, what have we seen? Um, you know, what's coming up, uh, you know, what do you guys have to solve this problem? So, and there's just not enough people to go to, to, to answer those questions. So, um, coast will help that, um, yeah, as well, we do our best as well. Well, Craig, I thank you ever so much for your time. As everybody well knows, after reading off everything that you do, you are a very busy man. Um, I would love to provide all of the links via social media, websites, etc., for all of the things that you are involved in so that people can, you know, check it out sure. for themselves. Yeah, you bet. I will have all that stuff for you. Great. Thank you once again. You've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. We thank Craig Norris, CEO of Victoria International Marina and as well, brand new at the Coast Center for Applied Sustainable Technologies. My name is Ria. I have been your host. Please tune in again next week for another episode.